Hello. My name is Roy and I'm speaking to you this evening from my office at Apavia. Just a few thoughts I'd like to share with you. I, I, um, they may be of interest to you and maybe of some uh, teaching interest to you. And um, so here goes. When I was first saved, born again, knew that I knew that I knew that I had become a child of God. It was just before my 18th birthday, 17 and 11 twelfths. It was November 7th, 1959. I'd gone to a church and uh, really by a series of events I understood that uh, I was a child of God and uh, interestingly enough I knew that I knew. I was a student at college at the time I was studying physics and mathematics indeed eventually I graduated with a, a double major in those two subjects so I was of reasonable intelligence, but what I learned in school was a far different level of knowledge than what I knew that I knew that I knew that I was born again. And immediately I began a quest to search God in a deeper, more intimate way. I wanted to know him. In fact, we have a song today that uh, goes something like this. I want to know you, I want to see your face. Well, that was my testimony at the time. And so throughout my college years, and especially in my senior year, I devoted myself to prayer and to Bible reading. As a matter of fact, I agreed somehow with God. I made this agreement that I would read the scriptures one hour a day and then study the scriptures and then I would pray either about that or uh, what I had read or whatever I sensed uh, needed prayer and I would do that again by the clock, one hour, not 55 minutes, not 59 minutes, 59 minutes and 60 seconds and I continued that regime for for a while and uh, uh, I enjoyed it I couldn't say it was tedious but it wasn't always uh, earth-shaking or exciting but it was developing it was growing it was learning but uh, something happened in uh, the summer prior to my graduation which would have been uh, 1962. The summer and uh, fall of 1962, <clears throat> I began to sense the presence of God. Actually, to me at the time, it was the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know uh, all the theology of it except there was a verse that said, He that hath my commands and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And I will come and manifest myself to him. And that's what I sensed happening. And it was growing and growing and growing until sometimes on the streets of New York City, uh, where I lived at the time, Manhattan, I would kind of look behind me to see if a person looking like Jesus was following me, but it was like he was within me and around me, and it was incomprehensible and inexplicable, except I was experiencing such peace, tranquility, that nothing really mattered, nothing ruffled me. Uh, my aspirations were non-existent. I didn't desire, I didn't, uh, it was kind of a, a 
dissatisfied satisfaction with what I was experiencing, the joy, incredible, inexpressible joy, the peace, and the sense of total acceptance and envelopment by God in his embrace, in his love, just was beyond expression. And uh, during this time, I was very, very careful to obey what I sensed the promptings or the leadings or the, the di understood the directions of the Holy Spirit. I remember once getting on a train. I was on my way home from church. I traveled about an hour and a half to get to church on the trains, the subways of New York City. And on the way home, a man walked on the subway and he was what we'd call a homeless person. And he had one foot that was wrapped in, it looked like rags. There may have been an infection or a non-healing wound or, or something, but uh, his foot was wrapped in certainly not hospital gauze. And it looked like there was swelling, and he limped onto the subway. And I assume now, looking in retrospect, that he may have been planning to sleep in a subway car, because at least it was warm. And so I was sitting in a position where I could uh, look in his direction and see him come in and take a seat. And I sensed the Holy Spirit say to me, give that man ten dollars now ten dollars back in 1963 was different than ten dollars today and it was all that I had in my wallet i mean that was my money for what i don't remember but that's all i had ten bucks in my wallet and uh, so i explained to the lord that that's all i had and he was unconvinced Give that man your $10. So I opened my wallet, unseen by him. He wasn't looking in my direction. And I pulled out those $10 I headed in his direction. And without a sermon, without a speech, without even in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I mean, that I was just doing what I was told to do. And I gave that man my $10. And I remember his reaction, unbelief, and then tears. What was precious to me was a hundred times more precious to him. And uh, that was the end of that. I mean, there was no conversation or anything like that, but I had obeyed the Holy Spirit. And there were other things of that nature where I felt prompted, directed to do this or do that or say this or go there or however the Holy Spirit led and I endeavored to be obedient and this has lasted for a week and then two weeks and then went into the third week and I couldn't imagine that heaven itself being any more wonderful glorious, uh, deeply, deeply satisfying to the deepest uh, yearnings of my heart than the joy, the peace, the love and acceptance that I, I sense. I, I couldn't imagine anything being better than this. And I aspire to nothing but total obedience to this person of Jesus Christ who is with me and within me and enveloping me. It went into one month and incredible that it went into the second month. And I mean, I was living a, 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 a different kind of a life. It's like I was living in this earth, in this life, but it wasn't here. It was, it was out of this world and uh, it went to the second month and it, it was glorious I mean my, my words trip over each other to try to explain the inexpressible to describe the indescribable but uh, 
Then went into the third month. And uh, I, I, I mean, the, the things that were going on, the, the things that were going on inside of me and the, the, the learning process, the development process, it, it was out of this world. Then went to the third month. And as we went into the middle of the third month, I was quite distressed because I sensed this episode, this uh, time, this chapter in my life was coming to a close. And I began to grasp, why, why, what have I done? Where have I disobeyed? Why are you, I didn't think of him leaving me, but this experience of his imminent presence fading. And there was nothing I could do. There was no, it, it was worse than a greased watermelon. There was no way that I had power to bring it and there was no way I had power to keep it. It just went. And so those three and a half months set a standard, set a, uh, a um, goal, uh, set a mark, so to speak, of the rest of my life. And uh, as I'm sure you well know, things happen in life. Difficulties, trials, uh, times of uh, depression, despair, as well as times of joy, but none of them even begin to approach the level of joy that I expressed in this time of my life. And um, I'm, I'm a father of three children and uh, nine grandchildren and trust more on the way. And I've experienced pretty much of what life has to offer. And nothing even begins to compare with those three and a half months, with, uh, excuse this expression, but it was to me in the biblical language, the manifestation of the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I remember the Apostle Paul writing in uh, one of his epistles saying, for me to live is Christ. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And another is, I live, nevertheless, not I, but Christ liveth in me. And it seems that, perhaps on a different level, I don't compare myself with him, but he knew what I would be talking about. And he would say, I understand, Roy, been there, done that. And so that was like an anchor, a focus point of my entire life. I wish I could say I lived my entire life that way, but I can say that I lived my entire life referencing that point. It's not over yet. And uh, I know one day I will be with him and I will see him as he is. But before I leave this life, my heart yearns to go back into his presence. And Moses, he wrote in Psalm 91, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, he shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I would say, oh, Moses, been there. I understand, and I'll be forever grateful. Thanks for listening. My name is Roy, and I'm your friend. May God bless you. Amen.